Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Planescape Torment. All right, we are in the Civic Fest Hall in our room, and uh, I took a little bit of time to uh, do it some uh, inventory rearrangement. So here I've got various, well, first off, keys, and then some other, like, miscellaneous... Uh... Like, can you just not hold that? Weird. Uh, miscellaneous uh, story-related things that I don't know if I need anymore kind of thing. Uh, over here, I have all of my scrolls. Over here, I have various weapons. And over here, I have nothing right now. So, uh, I have basically uh, rearranged all of our equipment. Um, I did find this dodecahedron in one of those things, so I'm going to take a look at that. I'm going to see if I can uh, look at some of these other items. I think I gave you... Uh, identify, didn't I? Uh, I did, but I did not memorize it. Alright, let's see. Need to get him some uh, third level spells. I don't know if he'll get any more of these uh, unique spells. Um, but it would be nice if he did. Uh, so I've still got uh, some things like the Codex of the Inconceivable. I don't know if I'll need that. Um, my intestines, chocolate closet, uh, scroll of evidence, which I haven't turned in yet. Uh, Finnum's book. Um, I know where Finnum is, and I just can't... Uh, uh, talk to him. Uh, my severed arm. Don't know if I will need that for anything else. Uh, scalpel, hammer, and iron pry bar. Uh, those are useful tools. Um, and the tome of bone and ash. Again, I don't know if I'll need that for anything. Uh, the cheese. I, I had an opportunity to buy them, and, and it seemed like there was a good reason to. So, um, still have the handkerchiefs, but I'm... Kind of guessing at this point that they won't be useful for anything. Uh, the Monster Jug and the Modron Cube and Fall from Grace's Diary. Um, and right now, uh, Ignis has nothing on him other than the Thrice Blind Charm. And yeah, so that is uh, that is what we're what we've got on us. Uh, now I can use the Dodecahedron, so let's go ahead and do that right now. This heavy dodecahedron, about the size of both your fists balled together, seems inexplicably familiar to you. Its texture is cold and smooth, but whether it's metal or stone, you cannot tell. A certain, almost intangible tension runs over the object, as if it were ready to spring into the air at any moment. Well, clearly, it just wants us to, uh, play AD&D. You know, use a, uh, um, longsword against a large enemy, that sort of thing. Alright, let's go ahead and use it. This heavy dodecahedron, about the size of both your fists balled together, seems inexplicab inexplicably familiar to you. Let's examine it closely. Upon closer examination, you realize that each side of the dodecahedron is a plate that can be twisted clockwise or counterclockwise. It appears to be a puzzle box or combination lock. As each of the pentagonal plates has five possible positions, the dodecahedron has no less than 245,140,000... 625 settings. I don't know how exactly I calculated that in my head, but uh, apparently I did. It would take every second of the next 77 odd years to hit all the combinations, but then you might just get lucky and stumble onto a solution in minutes. Eh, let's fiddle it with it for a bit. As you methodically twist the cold gray facets of the dodecahedron, a strange sensation forms at the base of your skull. Your hands seem to move of their own accord, turning the object and spinning its facets with mechanical precision. You've done this before. You knew the combination once, and you also become aware that there's a certain danger within the object. Whether it's from simple traps or something less mundane, though, you cannot recall. Let's keep working at it. In moments, you have what might be the first four sides locked into their proper places. As you begin to twist the fifth side of the dodecahedron, you recall a cunning blade trap that would snap out to lash at a meddler's hands, slashing their wrists and severing fingers. 
You avoid the trap with the proper number of rotations, certain that you've made progress in the unraveling of the object's secret. Let's keep working on it. I'm guessing that this is uh, something that because of my high intelligence or wisdom, I'm able to take care of easily. After avoiding the dodecahedron's springing blades, you slowly puzzle out the next series of facet positions. As you start to turn the ninth side of the dodecahedron, you suddenly remember a second trap. Jets of toxic gas that would form a billowing cloud of lethal corrosive vapor around a curious meddler. You circumvent the trap with the correct amount of twists, positive that you've nearly unlocked the dodecahedron. Let's keep working then. 5,000 experience points. You circumvent the dodecahedron's poisonous gas trap and begin your work on the final facet positions. Just as you're locking the 12th penta pentagon into place, you recollect sorceress runes hidden within the dodecahedron that would blast the unwitting holder with bolts of magical lightning. After disarming the trap with the correct number of facet rotations, the dodecahedron clicks and begins to open in your hands. The dodecahedron splits once, twice, three times a lady, no, uh, and eventually unfolds itself impossibly into a perfectly rectangular tablet the size of a large book. Etched onto its surface are a series of bizarre symbols. It looks like looks to be a code or language that you feel should be familiar to you, but it's not. Further examination of the tablet reveals that, by twisting the pentagonal facets that are now upon the underside of the tablet, different pages may be displayed across the tablet's face. You finally realize that the dodecahedron is a tome or journal of some sort. Hmm, until I can... until I learn to read this language, I might as well just put it away. Updated my journal. Alright, so I need to be able to read this. So if I use it again, I can unfold it, and yeah, alright. So I can, uh, I can open it up, but uh, I can't read it. I don't know if this is a, an element of intelligence, or if it's an element of just someone teaching me the language. I guess we'll have to uh, wait and find out. So, um, now that that's taken um. care of, um, people have been asking for me to talk to our, uh, party members. So let's go ahead and do that. Hey, what's eating you, Chief? Alright. I think we've done those. Lord, I don't mind you tagging along, but is there anything else you can do except chatter? Hmm. Not sure if we've, uh, done that. Hey, chattering's my best trait. He rattles his teeth for a moment, then grins. Eh, eh. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, I know about the litany of cur curses, Mort. I'm more curious about what uh, what you got while you were at Lothar's. Oh. Well, I made some friends while I was sitting on the shelf at Lothar's, waiting for you to bail me out. Thanks for taking your sweet time about it, by the way. They said if I needed any help, I could just call on them. Friends? What do you mean? updated my journal. Well, I just whistle and they kind of show up. They're a good bunch of bashers. Bite like snakes, too. Mort now has a special ability called Skull Mob. When invoked, he can summon a horde of skulls from off-screen to come and bite an opponent multiple times. The strength and damage of the skulls varies according to Mort's level, and the power can only be used a limited number of times per day. Hmm. All right. So oh, he has a new, uh, magic spell, quote-unquote. Uh, I could use some advice. What do you think we should do next? Well, here's how I see things. Go on. Looks like we need to find out more about that Night Hag gravel. And I have to tell you, Chief, I'm not looking forward to that. The Festal Sages and some, some of the Sensory Stones might be able to tell us something, though. Good point. Got some other questions. Um... You said you're a Mimir, right, Mort? Yeah, Mimir is a floating encyclopedia. You put information in, you get information out. Hmm. Reminds me of me, except I don't float. Uh, next question. Um, what do you know about the Night Hag Ravel? Well, she's a Night Hag. She was definitely barmy enough to make you immortal, of all people. I mean, she could have chosen me. Mort rolls his eyes. Still, anyone adult enough to lock blades with the Lady of P Pain isn't someone we really want to find. And how did you die, anyway? No idea, Chief. I kind of forgot when I died. 
Can't say I blame myself much at... Uh, can't say I blame myself much. At least there was something waiting for me after I died, even if it is life as a floating skull. I mean, it could have been worse. What happened to your body? Eh, I don't know, alright? It's just gone. Mort glares at you. But don't think I miss it, because I'm happy just the way I am. And I don't need your half-wit judgments or snide remarks, alright? Well, you know, if we ever got the resurrect spell, we could always bring you back, right? Alright. That's about the questions. Um, nothing more. Just checking to see if you were still with me. Alright, so, he now has... Uh, Skull Mob. Uh, 50 feet range. Mort can summon an avalanche of his friends from the bones of the night to come and take a bite out of a target. Magic resistance does not affect this ability. Target gets no saving throw against this effect. The skulls do 1 to 4 hit points of normal piercing damage per Mort's level. Mort can only use this ability once per day, except it looks like I can use it twice per day. Alright, next up. Endure. In enduring, grow strong. What is your will? Well, actually, I was thinking of leaving my stuff to Mort. What do you think? Oh, that's not what you were talking about. Okay. Dakon turns to you, his eyes like polished coal. His blade mirrors his eyes for a moment as you address him, then he nods. What is your will? There are things I would know, Dakon. I will hear you. I had some questions about the Githzerai. I wanted to ask you about your, our travels. Can I talk to you about your teachings? Dakon, what is Shrakt lore? Uh, I had some questions about the Githzerai. Dakon waits. Uh, could you tell me the Githzerai people again? I had some questions about Githzerai language. Can you teach me the ways in which your people speak? Know that the speech of the people has its found foundation in history. All things are a story to us, metaphor is a tool, and an inspiration to the strength. Know when we speak of Torg's table, we remember that Torg was noted for his hospitality and goodwill. When we speak of Selkon's heart, we recall the, the lecherous and cruel nature of Selkon. Oh, so Shaka, when the walls fell. Got it. I understand. Will you teach me? Updated my journal. Ooh, 600 experience points. Dakon teaches you some of the common forms of speech. A wise man is said to have wrote the Book of the Anarchs. While to accuse another of treason is to remember Vilquar's eye. It is said of generous people that their cupboards are, cupboards are bare. Common greetings include Hail Swordringer and Zerkai's kin bow to you. To which one should respond and the traveler is pleased. Dakon is a skilled teacher. After his instruction, you feel capable of exchanging proper greetings with other gifts or I. That's about the questions. You seem to place a special emphasis on knowing. Why? All things, whether structure or flesh, their existence is defined by their knowing of themselves. And if a man does not know himself? When a mind does not know itself, it is flawed. When a mind is flawed, the man is flawed. When a man is flawed, that which he touches is flawed. Dekon pauses. It is said that what a flawed man sees, his hands may bro make broken. Do you know yourself? Dekon falls silent. His coal black eyes take on the same distance that you noticed when you first met him. I ask again, do you know yourself? When Dekon speaks again, his voice has changed. His words echo like a great stone dropped into a chasm. It looks like he is forcing the words from his chest. It is not my will that you know this. Perhaps I was being too kind to phrase it as a question. All right, I had some other questions. Yeah, it's okay. I, I, um, now let's press them. The words come out of Dakon slowly, as if they are being carried one by one. It has come to pass that I do not know myself. Why? Dakon's voice drops to a whisper like sand. I do not know why. I know it has happened, but I know not the how, nor the when, nor how to know myself once more. Hmm. Well, um, it's a shame that I don't have an option to say something like, uh, well, maybe we can find a way to help you there, or something like that, because that, that seems like the, the, the way that I would, my, you know, lawful good, uh, nameless one would play it. Certainly that's what I would say. Um, I think we've talked about the blade. Uh... 
and some other questions. I want to ask you about our travels. What can you tell me about the city of Sigil? It is known by the name Sigil. Among the people, it is known as a city that does not know itself. Uh, pretty sure we've talked about that. Can I talk to you about your teachings? Can you teach me anything of weapon craft? Uh, can you teach me anything of the art, Decon? Know that I am not a teacher in this, but know that I may serve as a guide. I do not know how humans come to be versed in the art, but when you learn the art, return and ask again. Okay, I'll ask again when I'm a mage then. Oops, didn't uh, actually intend to end the what whole conversation. Is your will? Uh, Dekon, what is shocked lore? Dekon's forehead creases as if he was struck a blow. It is not my will that we speak of that phrase. Uh, Dekon, tell me, what is Shrekt lore? Dekon is silent for a moment. No, it is a place where I died my first death. Hey, hey, we have something in common, isn't, don't we? What is this place? It is one of the great homes of the people. It has suffered many wounds in its life. One of its scars is by my hand. What do you mean? Upon the rolling plain of Limbo, the people shape cities from the chaos with their thoughts. Know that there is no place for a divided mind. Dakon raises the blade from his shoulder and holds it before him. As he stares at it, it sharpens until it is almost as thin as a piece of paper. Go on. A divided mind is an unfocused mind. A divided mind fractures walls and weakens stone. As Dakon speaks, the edges of the blade corrode slightly, the metal misting and melting along the edges. Many divided minds may destroy a city. I understand. Go on. Long have I known the words of Zerthamon. Through my voice, many have come to know the words of Zerthamon. The Zerth protect the community from all threats, whether to the body or the mind. They are the guiding stones of the chaos. So it came to pass that I spoke the words of Zerthamon without knowing the words of Zerthamon. It came to pass that I no longer knew myself. So you doubted the words? No. Dakon's voice is edged, and his blade sharpens in response. I knew the words, yet it came into my heart that perhaps others did not know the words as Zer Zerthamon knew them. And so division formed. As my mind became as two, as my mind became divided, those that looked to me as a guiding stone became divided. Many scores of gifts are I, many hundreds of scores of gifts are I, doubted. Shrucked Lord died that day. So those that followed you came to doubt the words as well, and the city was weakened. The enemies of Zerthamon came. Know that their hatred of his words and of the people lent their blades strength. Know that they sensed the weakened city, and they brought war with them. Many gifts are I drowned in the chaos and beneath the blades of our enemies. Small beads of metal appear on the surface of the blade, as if blistering. No, this happened long ago. What happened to you? As I fell from the walls of Shrakt Lore, know that myself was broken. My blade was missed, my mind divided. I was adrift upon limbo seas, and I wa and I wished to drown. I died for days, my mind awash in division. How did you survive? Updated my journal. As you speak the words, you feel a strange crawling sensation eat its way through the back of your skull and your vision blurs. You take a deep breath and steady yourself. For some strange reason, you feel nauseous, as if the landscape had just started spinning around you. How did you survive, Dekon? I suffered. As I neared death, I came to know myself. I survived. That is all. Okay. All right, uh, that's about all that we can get out of you right now, it seems. All right, Anna. Anna just looks looks at you as you address her, and she frowns. Aye, what do you want now? Um, are you all right? Anna just glares at you. I wanted to ask you some questions. Why did you ask the stuck up... The stuck up your bus? <laughs> Why did you ask the stuck up your bus... Her, your questions then. Anna's eyes narrow to slits. Why are we even traveling with her? We don't need her, we don't. Uh, she's a priest, Anna. I don't have time for this, Anna. Stop being a banshee and lend a hand. Anna, please, you're very important to me and I need your help. Anna, I want you with me, not her. 
If she bothers you, I'll ask her to leave. I don't have time to argue with, argue this with you, Anna. If you don't like Fall from Grace being around, then leave. We'll discuss this later. Let's move on. Hmm. Look, it's only two ladies. Can I not, not get help from two ladies? Platonically? Anna, please. You're very important to me, and I need your help. This seems like the best one, but it also seems... a little bit iffy. Oh, I, and what is... why is that, then? This should be rich, it should. You pity me, is that it? You think I slow you down? Go on, say it. I don't pity you, and you don't slow me down. You're quick, you're skilled, and I really need all the help I can get. Anna frowns, her tail flicker, flicking back and forth. I, well, know I'll gut her if she starts sizing, sizing this up for a feast, I will. She glares at you. And don't get any ideas I'm staying, because you, you want me to. I'm just helping you out, I am. Fine. I had some questions. Uh, let's see. Hey, didn't I meet you in the hive before I found Ferret? Find anything on my body before you brought it to the mortuary. Tell me a little bit about Farad. Anna, when Farad went to return the tribute he took from my body, he vanished for a while, and then came back. But he never left Illwind Court. Do you know where he went? Anna, can you train me in thieving skills? Have you heard of a night hag called Ravel Puzzlewell? And that's ending it. I had a question about how you find my, found my body. I think we talked about this, but let's uh, double check. I what? Well... What were you doing looking for bodies in the pregnant alley? I mean, you would have had to creep your way through the tenement, then pass the Davis to get there, and the place isn't even heavily trafficked as the rest of the hive, so why would you even look for bodies there? I guess we didn't. And the shrugs. Rest of the hive is picked clean, it is. Got to find new spots to poach debtors, you do. As Anna speaks, you feel a crawling sensation at the back of your skull, and you suddenly realize she's lying to you. Are you sure, Anna? Must be something in your tone, because it stops Anna's tail dead for a moment, then then it resumes, a little slower than before. I I think. She frowns and she seems a little uncertain. I don't usually go there to scarp debtors, I don't. To think of it, I'd never even been there before. I just kinda came across it. So why did you go there? I I dunno. I just did. And lucky for you I did, or you'd still be there. Well, I would have recovered. The same crawling sensation as before worms up the back of your skull, and with it comes another real realization. Anna's lying, but oddly enough, she doesn't know she's lying. That wouldn't be a lie, then. I want to take issue with that. If you believe you did... S if you believe something to be true, just genuinely believe something to be true, you can't lie about it, even if you are incorrect. I mean, this might be a little bit different if she was, in fact, compelled. Anna, were you compelled to go there? Is that how you found me? Updated my journal. She nods slowly. I may have. She gives a half-hearted shrug. It wasn't one of my usual haunts, but I, I couldn't help myself. I just wanted to see what was there that day. And there you were, dead as a timber. She pauses. You were like a lodestone, you were. I didn't know what led me to find you. Led me to find you. Hmm, curious. I had some other questions. Uh, Anna, didn't I meet you in the hive before I found Farad? She nods a little warily. Ah, you did. I haven't forgot you. When I asked about Farad, you told me he was south and west of the mortuary. When he wasn't. Aye, I did. And you'd have done the same if some scarred wreck came to you and asked where you could find your da. She shrugs. You found him anyway, so I don't want, want to hear you carrying on about it, I don't. If you just told me where he was, it would have been a lot easier on us both. Now, what were you doing in by the mortuary? It's my territory. I was looking for debtors, I was. She looks you up and down, then smirks. Found a walking one, I did. I see. I had some other questions. Wh why do I not get to a chance to say, were you not shocked to see the person that you turned into uh, the mortuary walk out, walk up to you and ask you about your father? I mean, that seems like I don't know, something that might be relevant. I see, I had some other questions. Um, did you find anything in my body before you brought it to the mortuary? Now, we have talked about this, I'm sure. But we'll do it again. 
Anna looks at you warily, and her tail stops flicking for a moment, then resumes slower than before. I may have found something, but if I found anything, it's mine by right, it is. The other bits are in Ferret's keeping. And I don't have time for games. What did you find on my corpse? Well, you had some fist irons, you did, and a little bit of jink, but I left that for the Dusties, so they'd think I was a wee bit honest. You had an ugly ring that, that I kept. She dips her finger into her arm braces and pulls forth a small ring with a stone mounted on it. Worth thrice more than the jink and the irons it was. She studies the ring and squints. Too bad it's too ugly to wear. I'd like that ring back now. Why can't I be... That, that seems very, very, very sharp. Gained item. She studies the ring with a frown, glances at you, then back at the ring. With a sneer, she flicks the ring to you. Didn't want the ugly thing anyway, I didn't. Fine. Now, when you mentioned that some stuff from my body had gone into Farad's keeping, what did you mean? I... Farad takes a bit off, off of each corpse we find, he does. It's his right, being lord of the village and all. Off of every corpse you find? That's a lot of corpses. Oh, aye, to hear tell, old Stuttercrutch has got a stash pit somewhere close to him. It's the only reason I can see why he's up... He set up Kip in that filthy drafty hall it is. Nothing but stinking shadows. Really? And that's where he puts the tribute he gets? Aye. She squints at you. Now what are you on about? You planning to bob him? No, I've no cause to do such a thing. Ferret's done me no harm. Uh, lie. No, I have no cause to do such a thing. After all that running around to get that sphere for him and then getting next to nothing in return, I'm tempted to. I am, I am genuinely tempted to, but only the stuff that's mine. I'm wanting you to get such a thing I am. Ferret can be daft sometimes, but he's a mean as all fiends spit when he gets worked up, she frowns. And he loves his keepsakes, he does. But where would he keep it all? He's been at the village for as long as he says. He would have amassed quite a collection. Well, Anna is silent for a moment. I know he's never left his hall to get his, his tribute when he needed it. Wouldn't want to walk far with that lame leg of his, though. Aye, that's true. But only if you don't watch him careful. He isn't lame, though he puts on a fair show about being weak in the leg. So that crutch of his could be a portal key? Inna frowns in thought for a moment, then slowly nods her head. Aye, there's a thought. She shrugs. I wouldn't know how you'd use it, though. Maybe you just need to have it. Maybe we'll find out. I had some other questions. Uh, tell me a little bit about Ferret. Oh, Stuttercrutch? He's my dad. Well, not my real dad. He found me when I was a wee girl. Anna shrugs. He needed a collector to crawl into places the rest of the his fat gullies couldn't squirm, so he took me under his crutch. I didn't think you and him looked much alike anyway. Uh, can you tell me anything else about him? I'll go with the first one. Anna's eyes narrow and her tail begins to lash back and forth. And what do you mean by that, then? I mean, it's hard to see any resemblance between that ugly, stupid, greedy, smelly gutter troll and you. I mean that he doesn't look much like a tiefling. Yeah, let's let's not let's not do that. Uh, let's not do that first one. Uh, I meant that he doesn't look much like a tiefling. Uh, I definitely don't want to say I meant that you don't look much like a human. Um, I think that it might be safer to say I meant that you don't look like each other. I mean, you've got, like, red hair, and he doesn't, right? Yeah, right, right, right. Oh, now what could have tipped you off to that? My hair? My skin? I can't think of anything else. Anna slaps herself lightly on the forehead, then sneers sarcastically. Maybe it was the tail? Oh, aye, that might have been it. You're so much sharper than I thought you are. A real gem. What in the hells is your problem? I make a simple statement and you twist it like a dagger. Let's do it. A dagger's a dagger, so it is. All I was saying was that you and Farad look nothing alike. The two of you don't have much in common. And his face flushes a deep red. Oh, is that so? And how do you see that? truth. I mean, have you ever looked at yourself? Aside from the way you carry yourself, you're confident, sensible, and graceful. And that doesn't even take into account your obvious good looks. You have that rich, fire-red hair, those sharp green eyes, and that striking profile. Why? Uh, it's the same thing. 
Truth. I mean, look at yourself. You're at least twice the greedy corpse pirate that Ferret could be. And you have that strange hive smell about you that makes my eyes tear up. And you have that... Wow. Wow. I'm not even going to finish that one. Wow. I'm going with the first one. Anna just stares at you. So that's all I meant when I said that you and Ferret look nothing alike. Anna nods, still staring at you. She doesn't even blink. Are, are you listening to me? Anna suddenly leans in. She bites you sharply on the neck, giving a soft hiss. Rather than pulling back, she presses closely into you and whispers into you, your ear. Do you fancy your chances? Her tail begins to lash slowly back and forth, but the rhythm is more hypnotic than angry. You can feel Anna's heart beating fast in her chest and the color rising into her cheeks. You suddenly become conscious of the fact that Anna's skin is smooth, soft. I want to tell you something, and you can't poke fun at me. It, uh, all right. Do you know I like the way you smell? Oh, aye, it drives me barmier than a chaos man does. She sniffs up the side of your cheek and then gives a low, eager hiss. I see the way you look at me, and I like it. You've got hungry eyes, you do. It makes me a fire. This isn't exactly where I expected this to go. Uh, I, I had a feeling that this could go there, but... Okay. I want to bite you soft like around the neck. She teases the side of your neck with her teeth, never breaking the skin, and with every whisper you can feel her breath along your ear. Her hand slides up around the back of your neck and tightens, and you can feel her nails digging into your skin. I want to drag me nails along the back of your neck and force you to kiss me. <laughs> I was wondering if anyone else was going to say anything, considering that this whole time I've been staring at Dakon. I'd just like to interject here and point out that I'm not going to say anything to spoil the mood, Chief. I'll just float here and watch. D don't mind me, just sitting here floating and watching. That's me. Uh, I think you already did spoil the mood there, Mort. Do you know I can smell you from 50 paces? That smell of formaldehyde pouring off of you? Like one of them dusty shamblers? Maybe if you cleaned yourself up some, you'd be a right prize. Her eyes flash. I got a, like a 20 charisma now. I'd make passion with you so hard you'd be knocked off the spire. She steps back, her tail flickering light, flicking lightly against your leg, then gives you a hard stare. So, do you fancy me? Uh, 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 do, 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 do I, can I have an option, like, I, 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 I like you, but I haven't known you long enough? <laughs> I, I'm tongue-tied here, um, where, where's, where's my tongue-tied option? Uh, I'm pretty sure that grab her, bite her back would probably lead to more. I kind of feel that yes, yes I do would be, like, her, you know, her response might be along the lines of, that doesn't seem serious enough. So I'm going to choose that one. Well, then your chances are slimmer than you'd think they are. Anna sneers. She still seems to be a little flushed. I was only teasing you, you scarred vampire. And you don't smell that good, you don't. Okay. Look, enough of this. I had some questions for you. Okay. Um... I'm not sure if we'll have an opportunity to uh, re revisit that, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Anna, um, let's, let's talk about something else. Um, now for something completely different. Anna, when Farad went to return the tribute he took from my body, he vanished for a while, then came back, but he never left Illwind Court. Do you know where he went? Uh, okay, that's basically the same thing. Alright, that, that is the same thing. Alright. I'm um, not going to talk about uh, training me in thieving skills. I'm not going to be a thief. Have you heard of a night hag called Ravel Puzzlewell? 
At the mention of the name, Anna spits three times and makes makes a semicircle over her heart. S are you daft? Don't be mentioning her name if you value your life. Why? She is the evilest of the Grey Ladies, she is. Well, what about Psycholoon? Anna's voice drops almost to a whisper, as if afraid of being overheard. Filthy mean and with more power to toss around than some powers. It said she's all the brambles, though, uh, through and through, even her heart. It said you can never kill her, because her body's like a tree. You lop off one limb, and there's always another still growing somewhere else across the plains. You speak as if she's still alive. Of course she is. She has to be. And his voice drops again. How would you kill a thing such as she? That's why the lady had to maze her, so as, so as it said. Hmm. All right. I see. Let's move on. All right. And uh, with that... We will uh, end off the episode here. In the next one, we will talk to Fall From Grace and uh, Ignis, see what they have to say. See you next time, everyone.